to press live stream or whether you check part of this out, any part of this out uh, after it posts, doesn't matter. Uh, please consider becoming a subscriber to the channel. Uh, if you have any, wet, feel free to weigh in with your thoughts on any of these topics. I want to talk about um, the Michaela Mayer and Maiva Hamadouche uh, unification fight from last week. That was a lightweight, I don't know, super, super featherweight, 130 pound um, unification fight uh, with Maiva Hamadouche being the IBF champion from, she was from France. Um, that was on last Friday night. Also in the car, we saw Thomas Matisse, the gunner man. Uh, we saw him drop a decision, a controversial decision to Luis Melendez. It's a great win on there from uh, rowdy legend Montgomery who stopped uh, Martez McGregor. Uh, that was a super middleweight fight. I wasn't that familiar with neither one of those cats. Uh, but Montgomery had a, a knockout of the year type stoppage against McGregor who came out very aggressive and was made to pay immediately. I also saw the return of e, the young general, Ian Green. I uh, hadn't seen, you know, I hadn't heard anything from him in a, uh, for several years. Uh, but he was a guy who caught my attention for a minute. He defeated uh, Tyler Howard in an eight-round uh, middleweight bout. That was pretty entertaining. And then uh, the youngster from Ohio, Abdullah Mason, 17-year-old from the, uh, the the Mason, the Fighting Masons. It's his five brothers. He's the youngest. He took on Jalen Phillips. At first, I was like, why did they put this kid in here with the dude who appeared to have a couple of tools? I thought Phillips was, uh, you know, I thought Phillips was trying to win. And he, he had a bit of a game plan to him and could execute a couple of things. But Abdullah, I want to say in the second round, uh, got him out of there. Phillips was only one and up, but uh, Abdullah showed me some things. You know, he uh, he looked to be a bit of a banger. Uh, kind of got away from boxing and taking it. Uh, you know, being conservative and cautious, and you know, went for it and landed some big shots. Showed that he had some power. Uh, I thought the referee jumped in a little quickly with Phillips not having gone down to the ground. He was hurt. Uh, and was taking some good shots, but I thought he might. I thought the referee might have robbed Mason of the opportunity to to figure out how to like um, how to be a uh, a controlled uh, closer, you know, and, and and really finish the dude off in a in a um, without being reckless and without leaving himself susceptible to to a big shot. And allowing a guy to, you know, to get off the hook, so to speak. But uh, looking at the main event, which was Michaela Ma uh, Mayer, hell of a fight. I mean, you know, I saw Bob Aram talking about the two-minute thing. You know, women need to be fighting three minutes. Or if it's going to be, uh, if, if you can get it to three minutes and take the, the number of rounds down from ten to eight. Was 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 like a compromise that he was pushing on the on the uh, press conference that I saw. Uh, I think there will still be some complaints about that, but just an action packed fight. I think uh, you know the cards were kind of tough on Hamadouche, who you know they they the, the cards were wide uh, for all three judges, but um, when it's a rock'em sock'em top type fight for all 10 rounds and for the majority of all the two minutes of, of, of each round, I just thought, you know, Hamadouche just didn't give enough concern to and focus on defense to really break things up and show that she, you know, was winning some rounds. She made it difficult when you just come forward like that. And Michaela just kept catching her with different shots. You know, Hamadouche just kept running into these shots. But I think Hamadouche landed her share of telling blows, and it was a couple of times where she caught Mayer, and it looked like it. It really, I wouldn't say that Mayer looked uh, like dissuaded or broken or anything like that. But she it, it, she took a couple of shots, and her her reaction was just like, "Wow, I really got to bite down. It's gonna be a long night at work. Uh, it's gonna be a long night and." She she just hadn't been in that type of fire before. 
Uh, but she regrouped every time. It was only three or four of them, maybe, where I saw that look on her face. But she stayed in the pocket all night. Um, uh, you know, she's Al Mitchell and um Coach K, K Karama. I mean, she's a very well schooled boxer, very educated uh boxer and everything. Unfortunately, you know, the power just isn't there to get the, the stoppages and the knockouts that a lot of fans crave. But Michaela Mayer can box and boxes really well. Uh, she's tough. That win right there showed, uh, you know, that she's tough as hell. I thought it was an excellent fight, man. And I think it's been a continuation of a great run for women's boxing. Uh, the week before was the uh, the unification, the Final Four styled unification between uh, Cameron Chantel Cameron and uh, Mary McGee. Mary McGee came up short, lost her title. Um, that was a, a, a an action pipe, a action packed fight, but McGee looked like she had some fatigue issues and whatnot. And um, you know, Cameron showed me a couple of things. Uh, but yeah, but but Mayor, you know, good fighter. It'll be interesting to see what they continue to do with her at top rank. Uh, this was her first unification. Will she will she eventually go up and look to do something? You know, at the next weight class, she's a tall. Hell, I stood next to her out in Arizona. She's with her heels on. She was a little taller than me, so uh, it looks like I know she has a slender frame. But you know, I, I'm 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 uh, optimistic that she can pack on some pounds and and eventually go chase some of these bigger names. Uh, unless she would stay down where she's at and maybe let Amanda Serrano come in her neighborhood or something. I forget where uh, Serrano was campaigning at right at the moment. Is she at 135? I can't really remember. But I know I see she had a, has an opponent name. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, very very clear, clearly, you know, salute to Mayor for, uh, you know, headlining a decent night. It was an interesting card. Um, with the with the types of fighters that they had on there, you know Howard has been a top ranked fighter for the last couple of years. That you know we started seeing what the ceiling was for him. The introduction of Abdullah Mason, the seventeen year old, good showing for him. Uh, I wasn't expecting much from the Rowdy Montgomery and Martez McGregor fight, but when it ends in such a concussive uh, sequence of punches, you know when a guy is knocked out, out uh, that was that was. Uh, 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 that was a boom for the for the for the telecast, and then Ian Green to come back on the scene. You know, maybe he did did enough to be a part of another uh, you know another top rank card or something, and get his career going back uh, in 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 a, in a you know building some momentum for himself. Uh, he he kind of lingered around a little bit in the in in the mid rounds. So I, I was kind of wondering how that would have been. Uh, you know, what the perception of that would be. But he got it done. Uh, 2017, he was stopped in that fight. And um, that was the last that I'd heard of him. But I see he has he has been a little active uh, one fight in 2020. Yeah, that, so Kamal Russell, he fought him in um, September of 2017 and hadn't and was inactive until October of 2020. Fought once in 2020. And then he fought in uh, June of 2021, and then he was back in the ring last week against Tyler Howard. So uh, that's that. Uh, what I want to talk about, some honest boxing, from what I had in the title was, was some honest boxing talk, was looking forward. I just said the women have been on a good streak. 9.20. Let me put that date on here so I can put a time stamp in there. This weekend... Um, we have another interesting, what I think is going to be an interesting women's boxing match, women's bout. Uh, it's, it's a championship defense for Terry Harper. I think her nickname is Belter. Uh, this is this is a uh, super featherweight, so also 130 pounds. That's the other fight that was out there for uh, for Michaela Mayer was Terry Harper. Obviously, Terry Harper has been fighting on the zone, so it would be some kind of promotional stuff that would have to get worked out to make that happen. Uh, and then Terry Harper has to get past this week's opponent 
and Alicia Baumgartner, who's a show, a friend of the, uh, the a friend of the platform, a friend of the uh, the podcast. Uh, she's also based out of, uh, I think she's kind of based out of Detroit at this point, but I believe she hails from uh, Fremont, Ohio, originally. And it's just crazy because you know Alicia has, out of all the uh, the Ohio prospects and all the Ohio talent that's out there. Um, you know, you got Duke Reagan down in Cincinnati. Uh, Tyler McCreary had a couple of fights on ESPN. Albert Bell was with Top Rank for a few fights and is now, I just saw an announcement for him getting ready to pop up on the zone uh, for an eliminator fight. So shout out to Albert Bell. Um, Montana Love just signed out of Cleveland, just signed to the zone, uh, not the zone, he signed with Matchroom to fight on the zone. Um, then you had Charles Conwell, who had a couple of fights on the zone and, uh, you know, was kind of working himself into contention at super welterweight. So, uh, out of all these guys, Jared Anderson, out of all of these guys, the one who gets into a championship fight first is Alicia Baumgartner. And it goes down, uh, this weekend in the United Kingdom. Um, so she has to travel and, 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 you know, like I said, I've, I've interviewed Alicia, Alicia several times. She's been on the podcast a few times. I don't know if we got one live stream in together, but I've checked in with her here and there. I didn't even bug. I didn't reach out to her to try to bug her getting ready for this. I know it's been a, uh, it's been tough for her to, uh, once she lost, she, I don't think she had a full world title, but she had a, uh, she had one of the junior titles. Hell, maybe she did fight uh, Christina Lenarda too for a full... I gotta check on that real quick. I know it was a WBO title involved, I think. Let me check on that. But, um... Nah, it was an international title. World WBC international title. My bad. False alarm. But, um, what happened to my stuff? So, yeah, so she, so, uh, you know, Alicia, it just, what I was talking about with honest boxing is, you know, when you talk to fighters long enough and you start, you know, you, you really zoom in and focus on their careers, you know, if you follow the sport closely, and I'm, I'm not one of these. I'm not one of these 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 boxing people, whatever. I don't even know what the hell I am at this point. A dude who was writing as a dude who was writing about boxing for several years. Um, if you if you pay attention to what's going on, you start forming an opinion or realizing what the ceiling may be for a fighter who you've watched for seven or eight fights or ten fights. And, you know, maybe in, in, in your heart of hearts, if you're keeping it a buck, you start seeing that it's a chance that this fighter might need a little help, might need things to fall in place for them, for them to actually become a world champion. Um, that's just the truth, you know. And I, I don't say that, I, you know, I don't know if Alicia Baumgartner is not destined to be a, a world champion. Um, here she has her shot against Terry Harper. AB has a lot of ability. Um, you know, she's young. She's always in great shape. She stays in the gym. She seems to have a good team around her. We know, uh, her, her, uh, her, 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 her trainer who had kind of was retooling her game a little bit. The father of, uh, Anthony Harrison, he passed away last year. And now I think she's working under um, Tony Harrison's brother, and uh, so you know a different, a different type of tutelage and, and, and being guided differently. But it is what it is. Um, but I saw, you know, I saw Alicia face. I think her name was Kirsty Simmons uh, down in Louisville. Simmons gave her some troubles. You know, it was a split decision victory. Um. But, you know, Simmons, Simmons was a tough out, you know, and, and it's like, oh, OK, let me let me check that out. Then I also see um, 
you know, I watched the fight with uh, down in, in Louisville again with uh, Baumgartner and Christina Lenarda too. And she lost that fight. That's the one loss that she has on her record. And Lenarda too, she's aggressive. I didn't, I really don't know if I agree with, with, with Alicia losing that fight, but I thought she didn't control the action enough to where she allowed, she allowed those, uh, those judges, she allowed them to have a perception that, that maybe Lenardo too was the stronger fighter and was, 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 was having her way a little bit more and, and, and allow for them to turn in cards where she was edged out of the decision and it cost her that that silver or international title that she had. Um, but here it is now. She's here. Another person, you know, I run into the same thing, having a pretty decent relationship with uh, with Char uh, Charles Conwell. And I start, I haven't seen nothing to suggest that his ceiling has lowered, but you start looking around at the division that he's in and when you have a unified champion like uh, Jermel Charlo and then Castaño, it's going to be pretty, you got to, it's going to be pretty difficult, you know, to get in there and, uh, you know, come out as a world, you know, as a world champion. Not saying that it can't be done. You know, Virgil Ortiz and uh, Jerron Ennis at welterweight are in similar situations. You know, if either one of them have to fight a Terrence Crawford or Errol Spence Jr., for their world title shots, that ain't like um, you know that's that's a, a that's a bit different than Shakur Stevenson facing you know an older, lesser talented uh, a guy who was never respected, you know who who was always lightly regarded in Jamel Heron. Also, he fought uh you know to become a world champion at featherweight, he fought Joette Gonzalez you know, for a vacant title. So he, he finally beat a champion and taking out Jamel Herring, but it was an easier role for him to get into the championship picture. Like I said, Charles Conwell, he has his work cut out for him. Um, I'm, I, he's, he's, I think he's going to be up for the task, but if I had to give my winner between him and Charlo and, and him and uh, Castaño, that's, that's, that's a tough call. And so here with, with Alicia Baumgartner, you know, I'm sitting here like Terry Harper has shown me a couple of things. She's also undefeated. Um, she had the great fight with um, Natasha Jonas and, you know, showed that she can box, that she's tough, uh, that she has some power. Uh, it's a hell of a fight for AB. And she's over there across the pond trying to get it done. So... Uh, the other thing that's going on here is I am currently without a DAZN subscription. Uh, I actually let I, it actually expired the day of the Cameron and um, McGee fight, so I haven't seen that round for round just yet. Um, but I am gonna go ahead and, and I'm I was I was trying to make a decision between doing the monthly subscription for, if it's still nineteen ninety nine. Or just going and paying a hundred dollars for the year, and um, I just think at this particular point in time, with my interest kind of shifting around and what I'm doing with boxing, uh, for right now I'm gonna go ahead and get this month and be able to 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 support Alicia in this world title fight uh, with with checking it out. The other thing is I'll be able to go back, and, you know, if I got some time, I can go back and watch the. Um, the Cameron and McGee fight in its entirety and, um, you know, check up on it that way. The other thing that's very promising and intriguing about the zone at the moment over the, you know, over the last two or three years, since they've been streaming fights, they have had these runs, uh, these different runs where for two months, maybe even three months, you know, a month and a half to three months where their calendar was packed, maybe not with the most, compelling fights in the game but with a good variety of fights and um right now you, you you may not have a bunch of pound for pound names in the upcoming schedule but um this isn't a bad time to to get you a month when you have uh Munguia and Rosado is this weekend that's this weekend 
over here in the States. You also have uh, Demetrius Andre defending his title against Jason Quigley the following week. I think Mirajadon Akhmedaliev is also on that card against McWilliams Arroyo. And then um, the other one that jumped out to me was Teofimo Lopez. Unified uh, lightweight champion Teofimo Lopez defends his titles against George Cambosos Jr. on the zone. We know he's uh, he has the promotional deal with top rank. We all know the history there. Uh, and then you have Devin Haney. Uh, against Joseph Diaz in uh, December the 4th. So, like I said, it's it's a couple little, it's some familiar faces right there that I think it's a good moment for me to jump in and, um, you know, maximize my, my $20. Uh, so, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in that crowd now. I think, yeah, Julio Cesar Mark. Oh, yeah. And then Julio Cesar Martinez. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I messed that up. MJ, Moroja Donak Medalia faces Ronnie Rios on that card, on the Andre Quigley card. And then also you have uh, Julio Cesar Martinez against uh, McWilliams Arroyo on the undercard. I made a comment last week that with the promotional situation with. Um, the uh, the undisputed fight with K uh, Canelo Alvarez and Caleb Plant, you know, one of the drawbacks of him being a free agent and and, and where he is with his business, and why I didn't why I, I didn't buy that fight. Um, but with the undercard, a fighter like Julio Cesar uh, Martinez wasn't on there because, you know, they just bought PBC just got into Canelo business, not into the, I don't know what Canelo's promotional is it canelo promotions or whatever something like that no boxing no life promotions or something but um anyway you get to see one of my favorite fighters and um an action pack guy and julio cesar martinez i think his nickname is ray um so that's what um you know this weekend i want to check out you know the home the home team alicia Baumgartner. Uh, picking her for the fight, you know, in terms of uh, looking at a winner. Ah, that's tough, man. That's tough. Uh, coming out of the fight with Natasha Jonas, Terry Harper has some hand issues, I believe. Had an injury, sustained an, in uh, uh, an injury in that fight. And then she's been, uh, she's been inactive and, and been away for a minute. So, but then... You know, Alicia Baumgartner hasn't been the most active. So uh, it is what it is, though. You know, she's been staying around, staying active, taking the fights as they come. There was a moment where there was a, a, an offer out there for Baumgartner to face, uh, to face Michaela Mayer in one of her title defenses. And it would have given Alicia a shot at the title. But it was only on like four or three weeks notice or something. Um, and, you know, Baumgartner and her team declined the offer and went in another direction. It was some back and forth there on whether or not she really wanted to fight. And she just said that, you know, Baumgartner's last word on it was that she wasn't, uh, you know, she wasn't a three week fighter. or I don't know if it was three, four or five or whatever it was. But she said, um, you know, I deserve to have a full, I, I deserve the respect, you know, to go into that type of fight with the full camp versus just taking what you give me. And, you know, she made her decision and, and, you know, and, and, and luckily for her, there is this ability to, I mean, there is this opportunity here now for her to take advantage of in terms of fighting for a, uh, a world title. And then I want to say, what was that? Is it next? Yeah. Also on the uh, the, the Andre Quigley card is the other half of the final four as super lightweight with Kaylee Reese and Jessica Kamara. They're also. So again, a lot of action in women's boxing, a lot of excellent fights happening for the women. Um, Reese and Kamara should be another excellent bout. It really should be. 
and we'll get to see who the who the uh, the opponent will be. The winner gets to advance and face Chantel Cameron, who I was just talking about a little bit ago. And um, we'll see how things, you know, that little situation gets wrapped up. So it's been dope, you know, for these these uh, these United States women. McCaskill has been on the zone quite a bit. Um, and now Kaylee Reese, Alicia Baumgartner and uh, Mary McGee all get to fight on on, um, you know, on a stream or a network, a platform and whatnot. And, and, and um, you know, advance their careers and whatnot. So that's it, man. It, you know, I, like I said, I was talking some real boxing. You got a lot of guys, a lot of these channels, you know, they attach themselves to the fighters in their hometowns, you know, or the fighters that agreed to do an interview on their platforms. And they become beholden to these guys and highly biased for all of these guys. And, you know, never question anything that they do and never give the, you know, their opponents any real chances of, of getting the victory. And I ain't really in that. You know, I don't really do that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Alicia Baumgartner, obvious, obviously. I think she has a lot of talent. I, I, I like uh, I like her professionalism. But she just might run into a fighter this weekend that's the better woman on the night. She could. But, uh, you know, tail of the tape looks good. Less wear and tear on Alicia to some degree. Um, very athletic. You know, an athletic background before even getting into boxing. Uh, she was like a highly touted or, the, or the, a prospect of the year. In like 2017, maybe 2018, for Ring, uh, for Ring Magazine. So a ton of uh, pedigree and expectations and all of that in her. And now she has a chance to go over here and capitalize on all of that. And I'm going to tune in Saturday night and support my fellow Ohioan. O-H-I-O. -O. Let me get on out of here. Like I say, man, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Peace.